Tory Lanez's initial attempt at a retrial in an incident surrounding Megan Thee Stallion from back in 2020 has been deemed unsuccessful by an attorney general in California. I'm going to explain to you exactly what happened and why this is news now. There is an affidavit floating around on the internet from Tory Lanez's former bodyguard, Jaquan Smith, who apparently was the only sober person in the vehicle the night that Megan Thee Stallion claimed she was shot by Tory Lanez in California, leaving the Kylie Jenner party. The affidavit is pretty long, and I'm going to read the entire thing to you, and then we'll talk about what this means for Tory Lanez afterwards. Jaquan Smith apparently wrote to the courts, I was the driver and bodyguard of Mr. Daystar Peterson, who is better known as Tory Lanez, in July of 2020. Mr. Peterson has been known to me for seven years. At the time of the incident, I had worked for Mr. Peterson for three years. He has not only been my employer, but also somebody I consider to be a close personal friend. On July 12, 2020, I was asked to drive Mr. Peterson to the home of Kylie Jenner, where Miss Megan Pete and Kelsey Harris were present. Mr. Peterson, AKA Tory, was at Miss Jenner's home for approximately two hours when I received a phone call to come and pick up Megan and Kelsey. Megan, Kelsey, and myself left Kylie's home, but I was asked by Megan to return because she stated that she had forgotten her shoe. When she arrived at Kylie's home, at this time, Kelsey stayed in the car while Megan exited. Megan did not enter the home at this time as she ran around the back to the pool area where Tori was located. Both Megan and Tori returned to the car after a few minutes. Megan was bickering, but I am unsure of the exact words she was saying. She seemed upset. The four of us left Kylie's residence. As I began to drive, Megan started to fight with Tori. They were going back and forth. I remember Tori saying to Megan that he was going to tell Kelsey what was going on. I do not remember what street we were on, but Megan asked me to stop the vehicle. I did as she asked. And Megan went on to sit at a nearby bus stop. Tori went and spoke with Megan. After about two minutes, they returned to the car. And I began driving again, said Tori's bodyguard. Megan started to argue again. And Kelsey asked what was going on. Tori told her that he and Megan had been dating and intimate. Kelsey was upset by this as she and Tori had been dating in the same manner prior to any relationship with Megan. Megan and Kelsey began fighting. I pulled over to stop them. Megan and Kelsey both got out of the vehicle and continued to fight both verbally and physically. I broke up the fight, said Tori's bodyguard, and was pulling Megan toward the back of the car. I saw Kelsey with a gun in her hand. Tori ran from behind Miss Pete, AKA Megan, and myself toward Kelsey. And Tori and Kelsey began struggling as Tori tried to unarm Kelsey. I was still pulling Megan and did not see who shot the weapon. I was lucky I was not harmed. And in my opinion, Megan was also fortunate. The whole incident happened so quickly within just a couple of minutes. Tori's bodyguard, former bodyguard, said he wanted to present this evidence during Tori's trial, but was prevented from doing so as the district attorney was not ready to cross examine me. And later they did not call me due to the holidays and the court schedule, I believe that I have should have been allowed to present this evidence at trial. So there's a lot to digest there. I want to clear up any much of this as I can, because this is confusing stuff, right? Let me say this. There are a few things that are out there that I do know. Tory's team had an opportunity to call Tory's former bodyguard, Jaquan Smith, as a witness. They opted to not do so. They believed they were good without Jaquan. That's the most important thing I want you to know. Number two, from what I just read to you, Jaquan, Tory's former bodyguard, really said a lot of nothing, if we're being honest. I know a lot of people are saying, this is enough to get Tory off. Well, he still made sure he didn't perjure himself. Because at the end of the day, he said he was helping Megan when whatever happened between Tori and Kelsey, who was struggling for a weapon, he never 
Flatfoot said, my guy didn't shoot that weapon. He never said Kelsey shot that weapon. He never said Tory shot that weapon. He said it could have been either of the two. All he knew is Megan was fortunate that it could have been a lot worse. That's not good enough. Also, Jaquan Smith, Tory's former bodyguard, went missing after this alleged incident for a very long time. That's an important piece of the puzzle because he gets us to Tory's trial back in 2022. Remember, that trial happened in December. Why is that important? By the time this affidavit reached the court's desk, by the time the judge had to review it, if you remember, if you remember, the state was already like, we good. We don't need Tory's bodyguard or former bodyguard to testify. We believe we're good without it. Tory's team believed that they didn't need it. They didn't believe they needed him. And Tory's alleged prosecution, right? The, the people that tried to put Tory in jail, they also were like, we didn't need it. Obviously, the way it played out, clearly Tory could have used his guy at least on the stand. But keep in mind, a dude had been missing for a while and just randomly kind of appeared right before this trial where Tory's fighting for his life. This is, again, around Christmas. Jurors are tired. The judge had the final say so of do we allow the state to interview Jaquan Smith, aka his bodyguard? But again, the state's like, listen, we'll help you make your decision, judge. We don't want him against Tory's team and saying they didn't need him. They thought they were good without his testimony. They thought they were good without him as a witness, the biggest witness that could have been present. So we're, we're not even talking about Tory's team using this guy to help their case. They already made their decision. The state prosecution was the only one in play to interview Tory's former bodyguard. And they're like, no, I'm pretty confident we're good without this dude. It's already the Christmas holiday. This made the judge's decision to say, okay, people are trying to get home to their families for the holidays. The state say they don't need him. Matter of fact, the state say the only way that they would use him is if they have more time to talk to him to make sure they're on the same page, which is the state's right. The judge is like, ah, we've been doing this enough. Let's go ahead and get this thing over with so we can get home for the holidays. So we can not be in court for the New Year's. That's how it played out. That's what happened. Now, you can do as you may, but all I've given you right there is factual information. There's a lot of speculatory information. I, look, I don't know who did what to who. I'm giving you the information that you need to do as you may with the rest of this story. I don't know who the heck Tory hired as his defense. They did a poor job. There is no way on God's green earth you allow your bodyguard to go missing. Because clearly, if he ain't, he tried to show up and be hero and say, yo, I'm going to come defend my guy's honor, right? Where were you for years? If I'm the judge in the case, if I'm the jurist, it's like, even if this dude was allowed to be a part of Tory's witness crew, right? I would be looking at this with a suspect. I like, where have you been? Where have you been hiding? What, where have you been, bro? Like, you can't one minute say, I'm trying to help my guy, but look suspicious and hiding. I don't, I don't know what the brother had going on. I don't know what legal, but I don't know what possessed Tory's bodyguard to go MIA for so long. And I don't know what possessed Tory's team to say, we don't need him even when they got him. Right? Like that feels funny to me. Like I'm just being, I'm not a conspiracy theorist guy. Like y'all know if you've been following me for a long time, I really can't stand conspiracy theories. But if you want to buy into some of this stuff, man, that all feels really weird to me. If you buy into some of this stuff of people working with other entities here, you there is some stuff you could buy some stock into. How about that? I'll leave it at that. From what I see, from what Tories, even if the bodyguard would have delivered this statement, I don't think it would have been enough. Now, for, for, for any Tory fan out there, as I close, the attorney general's ruling is informal. This is new news to me. These are new terms to me. 
Meaning, it's not the end-all be-all. There is a still a world where Tory can get somebody else to say the evidence of Tory's bodyguard is enough. What his affidavit is enough new evidence to start up a new trial or the appeal process. But right now, the initial ruling is not enough, which means Tory's team now got to go the extra mile to try to see if somebody else will allow for an appeal, right? To try to get this trial redone. But again, as of right now, the initial informal ruling is no, Tory, this is not enough. My opinion is had Tory's bodyguard been consenting to be a witness from the beginning and available and accessible, I don't think you look at it this way with such a suspect eye. Because Tory, if this is his man's, dude said he knew him for seven years at that point, bodyguard for three years. If this is your guy, then you're able to properly use your witness and talk to him and get on a, be on the same page and all that great stuff. This coming out of the blue was not going to work. And even his affidavit is not enough because he never put the, the gun in the hands of one person specifically when that trigger was pulled. Time, love, and support is what your boy would never take for granted. If you thought I did a great job of breaking that down real quick, real quick, real quick, I need you to give me a like. If this is your first time talking to me, or uh, if it's your first time watching me, I need you to hit the subscribe button. If you're on YouTube, the Facebook uh, like button is available to you. You can follow me on Facebook as well. Thank y'all so much for the time, love, and support. Please drop drop some love. Some You can drop a super chat. You can drop a donation on Facebook. We appreciate it all, all right? I'm out. What up, what up, what up? It's yours truly, the one and only Pharaoh. If you appreciate the great quality content that your boy consistently puts out for the culture, you can now take that love and appreciation to the next level. You can cop a supporter badge on Facebook or a membership on YouTube. We have perk announcements for both platforms coming really, really soon. Thank you in advance. As an independent journalist, this is how I feed my family, pay my bills, all that great stuff. So any support is appreciated dearly. Thank you in advance. Time, love, and support. I'll never take it for granted.